I'm continuing work on my Stickley Highlands bookcase and I need to make some mortises in the 76 inch long or 1930 millimeter uprights to accommodate the tenons of the stretchers and rails. Those are pretty big work pieces, but I've come up with a crazy idea of how I can get that done on my Shopsmith Mark 7. So I've laid out all the mortises on my uprights. To get the vertical position, I just followed my plan and started from the bottom of each upright and worked my way up, subtracting four millimeters on each side for the cheek, of course. And then once I had the vertical position of each mortise, I came through with this double pin marking gauge where I've set the inner pin 14 millimeters from the face and the outer pin 24 millimeters from the face so that I end up with a 10 millimeter mortise. But I'm going to cut the mortises with this 3 8 inch spiral upcut bit and that's about 9.5 millimeters. So I'll be undercutting the size of these mortises so that when I cut the tenons to 10 millimeters, I'll be able to shave those tenons down with a shoulder plane to get a perfect fit. People familiar with Shopsmith tools might be wondering why I don't use the horizontal boring feature of the Shopsmith system to make these mortises. Well, that might work okay for the mortises in the middle, but for the mortises way down here at this end, I would need lots of outfeed support since these boards are 130 millimeters long or 76 inches long. And then for the mortises at the other end, I would need lots of end feed support. And I would need that support to be totally parallel with the table so that all my mortises were in the same plane. For one, I only have one workbench I could use for end feed or out feed support one at a time. And getting that in feed and out feed support coplanar with this table would require a little bit of woodworking black magic. So, this is the solution I'm going to try out for now. I've got the Shopsmith in the vertical position. I've got the main table connected to two auxiliary tables, and those tables are supported by the auxiliary support legs. And that gives me a parallel in feed out feed support for the entire length of the piece. Now, normally, you would work with the workpiece in this orientation from front to back. But I'm going to be sending the workpiece between the two wave tubes uh, and I can get away with that because it's thin enough. I've built this auxiliary fence and I've got it attached to these two miter gauges which are both locked into the table miter slots. Then to keep the workpiece firmly against the fence, I can't use my traditional feather boards because they're not pointing in the right direction. The traditional feather boards are meant to apply force perpendicular to the slots and I need to apply force parallel to the slots. So I'm using this old spring steel Shopsmith hold down system and I did do another video on that. I'll link it in the description. I do admit this took me a while to set up. I had never done it before. I suppose it could have been much faster to go out to the store and buy a couple hundred dollar plunge router to fit my half inch bit but I still would have had to build a jig for that anyway. So my plan is to line up the bit with the end markings of my mortise, make a full depth plunge, which I'm going to make at 3 8 of an inch, move the workpiece down to the other end, make a full depth plunge, set about an eighth inch plunge, and go from one end to the other, drop it another eighth inch, go from one end to the other until I've reached my full depth. And I'll do that for all 20 mortises.
Okay, this setup worked fairly well. I did have an issue where on the very first mortise, the bit picked up the workpiece and, and pulled it on top of these hold downs because I did not have anything holding the workpiece down to the table at the time. Eventually, I'll learn my lesson on that. So I super glued these three paws here to hold down the workpiece and after that, everything went smoothly. So as you can see, the other mortises are working out just fine, but the blowout on that first one was pretty nasty. And this is right at the top and it'll be somewhat exposed. So I collected some fine sawdust from my dust collector hood, mixed it up with some epoxy and filled that hole. Actually, it looked, turned out pretty good. It's a little dark, obviously but that's okay. But basically I wanted to fill that cavity. Then I made a drill template, which I'll line up on top of the imperfection. And then I'll use this Forstner bit to drill out a nice round hole. I've also traced that hole onto this workpiece, which is a cut off of this post. I'll cut that off, round it out to fit the hole and basically have myself a patch. Then I'll take it back over to the shopsmith and finish this mortise. Okay, I think I got a pretty good fit. Not too snug, not too loose. There might be some gaps, but might as well glue it up and see where we're at. Piece is already swollen with the glue. I'm gonna make sure I got the best grain alignment possible. So I'll let the glue cure cut it flush, fill any gaps I need to, and then finish the mortise. I've left my marking gauge set up, so now all I need to do is make sure I'm on the correct reference side and reapply my marks. Okay, so here's the repair completely made with the full mortise cut, just like the others. I tried an experiment here with this round patch. Normally, I would have cleaned out material straight across and then down the length of the grain and then cut a square piece all the way to the end so that the lines would have hid in the grain a little better rather than the circular arc. Sort of stands out like a sore thumb at this point, although I am happy with the grain match. However, I'm not giving up on this right now because I am going to be staining this entire bookshelf more of a darker brown. And these, this dark seam line will most likely hide within that. So that's all the mortises for the 1930 millimeter long or 76 inch long uprights for my stickly bookshelf. And this setup did the job, but it's too crazy. It takes too long to set up and given the quality of the results, it's just not worth it. It was a fun experiment, but I don't think I'll do it again. Now I will use the Shopsmith in overhead routing mode for mortises and smaller work pieces, such as were present on the Hoosier step stool that I'm sitting on right now. I'll link to the video for this project build in the description. But for larger pieces like these uprights, 
I'll probably be using my palm router from now on. One of the reasons I didn't use this palm router for this project is because I only have the fixed base. I don't have the plunge base or the fence. But based on this experience, I did go ahead and order the fence and I did go ahead and order the plunge base. And I'm looking forward to trying these out on the mortises for the stretchers that contain the slats for the bookshelf. Well, that does it for this Woodshop Nerdery video. I hope to see you in the next one.